Uh huh. There he is. All right. How you doing, man? What's up? Can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Good, good. Hey. All right, we're in. We're in. Just playing a little music here. Before can you hear this? Can you hear this? Yep. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. We're gonna play a little music here while we're waiting for folks to jump in. All right. I thank everybody for coming and hanging out. Uh -huh. We got the future man here. Yes, indeed. And uh, I'm going to put my camera so I'm here too. Hey, okay, hey, my... hey. I'm going to clean my lens so I look the best. <laughs> These are some uh, some clarinet pieces that I recorded uh, a while back, just solo clarinet pieces. Can you hear that okay? Yeah. 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 And uh, let's do one more just because we can. Just because you can. Why not? Mm-hmm. that Bailey and Abby had a uh, live stream tonight. Yeah. And, uh... mm. Well, welcome everybody. Uh, we appreciate you coming out and uh, hanging out with us a little bit. Got the, uh, got the future man here. What's up, everybody? Um, so we've got kind of a special show for you tonight. We're going to uh, uh, actually play for you a little bit uh, first, which is kind of unusual for people to be able to play live, <laughs> and uh, you know, which is kind of a strange thing to think about. You know, that it's unusual to actually play. You know, it's 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 funny. I actually um, I don't think I've I've really I definitely haven't done this online. You know, I think I did, I think I did one, uh, one little thing with Jonathan Wires about a week and a half ago, a bassist here in town. He came over, I needed him to put a bass part on something. So he was all the way on that side of the room with his mask and I was all, all the way on this side of the room facing the other way from him. And, uh, and that was the only time that I've, I've done any playing with anybody, um, you know, live the entire time. <laughs> and, uh, Since the old days, huh? Right. So yes, it's the old days, right? Um, so uh, you know, some of you, some of you know that that Future Man and I do a lot of a lot of duo clinics together. <clears throat> we have for many years. Um, you know, we spent 14 years together with Baylor Fleck and Fleck Tones, and he's traveled with me with a mutet, recorded with me, and um, we've done a lot of playing together, a lot of hanging, a lot of educational work, and uh, so. So I was thinking tonight. Well, what we could do is, is play a little bit. And uh, um, I think what, you know, what I'll do is, is this melody that we're talking about, I'll play it a couple of times. Nice. And, uh, and then maybe like you take a little, a little solo, solo kind of thing. And then you cue me back in the melody. We'll play it once and we'll come back out. All right. I got my little floor tom with the strings on it and the F hole. So. Oh, yeah. yeah so, so <laughs> tell us about that drum a little bit because I know it's a little unusual. Yeah, well, this is a uh, this is a uh, one of the t uh, toms in my in my acoustic drum set, and there's a lot of experimentation here. 
um, I wanted to have the drums breathe like the string families, you know, and the orchestral families with mm -hmm. F holes instead of just drilling a hole in it for the drum to breathe. I said, Michael Turner, who worked with Mother Tone, I said, man, what if we had F holes to let the drums breathe just like violins and cellos? I mean, a, a million strings, Stradivarius couldn't be wrong. Uh -huh. Why don't we try it? And so, um, so we got the drums, like I got an F hole, and this is my, one of my floor toms. And then on the other side, Michael Turner cut, uh, where's the other F hole? There's the other F hole. So there's mm -hmm. one on this side and one on this side. And it just kind of lets the drum breathe and lets you mic it from the top from the bottom or listen to it from the F-hole. Mm. And then um, these are Schleichman drums, which are already the, uh, the only acoustic drums that don't drill into the uh, shell to make these stick to it, mm. right? Okay. They, they, right? They, they, they connect from top to bottom with these little metal rods, but Michael Turner added these little strings. So the, so uh, the top yeah. and the bottom are connected like tabla drums when you see the string. Sure. And these strings are actually. Oh yeah, almost like a talking drum. Actually, usually if I if I if I squeeze them, they're 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 actually musical. Right. So we're messing around with it, and I wanted to uh, have yeah. a special moment with you here, just messing with this floor tom. Here. Right on. This right be on. very musical, experimental. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you've always yeah. been very musical. You're a very musical cat. <laughs> and uh, so all right. Music. That's right. Um, <laughs> All right, so I got my headphones in. I'm I'm hoping this is uh, this is going to be cool, you know. I'm in. I'm in. And uh, so we'll, we'll give you a little something here. And uh, um, again, we want to thank you guys for coming out. This uh, this is a tune called "Should I Stand," and uh, it's actually based off. Well, we'll tell them what it's based off of afterwards. We'll see if they can figure it out. And uh, so. Uh Thank <laughs> you. 
Nice to play with you again, man. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. <laughs> Look. <laughs> the force is strong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I've seen some people on here from Argentina and Buenos Aires. We want to say hi All to right. everybody. We're tuning in. I'm my uh, right. my in-laws might be tuning in from Japan. I'm not sure, but they might oh, be. Wow. That's cool. And uh, if they are, my, my uh, father-in-law's birthday is in a couple of days. Yukichi Suzuki. I want to wish him a happy birthday. 
Excellent. and uh, um, wish that we were able to see them. But uh, we sure do miss them and love them. And uh, see Maine up there also. And so we got a bunch of bunch of different folks. So uh, thanks for tuning in, everybody. Thank you. Um, so that was a tune called called Should I Stand? And uh, I wrote that many years ago. And it's uh, it's actually based off of uh, the Pledge of Allegiance. And, uh, um, and it seemed kind of relevant during these times to uh, to play <laughs> something like that, you know, because we're going to get into talking about some of this stuff and uh, um, the experiences, some of the experiences, uh, uh, future man that, that you've had along the way yeah. and talking yeah. about some of this. But um, uh, so that tune is based off of the words of the Pledge of Allegiance. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, so, you know, let's let's play it through one more time. And so when when you hear the melody come, that's the beginning of the pledge. And, uh, um, you know, we I know that you and I both love this country a lot, although we disagree with some of the philosophies that have been around for a long time and, and the way that uh, the inequality, shall we say, some of those things we're going to get into and, and rap about a little bit. Yeah. And uh, but I think it's important to, um, you know, to, to take a stand, to, to think about where you stand and uh and, and should yeah. you stand like should you stand and be heard and uh, uh and i think the answer to that is yes i think that we should stand and be heard and uh um and sometimes standing and being heard is you know for people taking a knee sometimes it's for protesting uh you know sometimes it's putting stuff on facebook there's many different ways to uh you know let people know how you feel about things and uh so let's play this melody one more time, and 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 then uh, we'll get into talking about some stuff. If that's okay. With yeah. You, right? how, how's my drum level? I'm not blasting you out or anything. Okay? I think it's pretty good. I checked with Julia. Okay. She said it was okay. So I, I think right. that, I think that we're good. And uh, I see my mom's out there. Hey, mom, love you. Hey, hey. Yeah, yeah. She's on. She's on Instagram. Excellent. That's awesome. <laughs> all right. Excellent. Um, all right. So let's let's play the melody on this one more time, right? All right. Here you go. All right. Uh-huh, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, so, wow, man, there's, you know, there's been a lot, there's a lot going on this year, you know? I remember yeah. talking about, uh, um, you know, the, the, the year of 2020 being the year of hindsight. <laughs> 2020 vision, and, right? Uh, yeah. And so, uh, you know, I, I think, um, I think we've certainly witnessed that so far. You know, we've been giving given a, a unique opportunity in, in history um, where we've had to stop for a while. And, uh, yeah, yeah. And, and, and then coming out of that, when we were starting to come out of that, obviously um, the George Floyd situation, um, you know, something as horrific as, as that was broadcast to the world, um, uh, as well as, you know, numerous other folks who have been, uh, had their lives cut short and, yeah. uh, and so there's there's a there's a lot going on. I mean, there's there's a lot of um, anger, distrust, um, yeah. pent up frustrations. <clears throat> um, you know, there's been a lot of protests, uh, which I stand behind 100 um, percent. I do not um, in any way, shape or form uh, condone violence um, or looting. Um, um, you know, and I think it's a very small faction of people that are doing that. Uh, yeah. But I also tell yeah. people, you know, I have not, 
Uh, I have not dealt with systemic racism in my life. I have never had to deal with it. You know, yes, I have yes. I have not on a daily basis had my life informed um, and and influenced by racism and these kinds of things. And and so, you know, I know the, the music industry, the arts has always been uh, more integrated. And, uh, um, you know, people like Frank Sinatra uh, were were big proponents of, of helping that and, and moving that forward. Yeah, the arts and, uh, have always been a, a, a forward uh, propulsion to helping to, to resolve and bring things together. Yeah, and so what, what, is, what does that mean to you that, that you're chosen? Well, you know, I, th I think that drums probably choose, chose you as much as you chose the drums and music. Yeah. And so, so could you maybe talk a little bit about that and, and um, you know, sort of, sort of with the arts um, embracing um, um, uh, cultural yeah. And, yeah. And, yeah. And, and, and racial differences, yeah. you know, through yeah. the years? Yeah, I, I really think art is just so powerful because art, not only does it represent entertainment, it represents entertainment. And so a hmm. lot of times the artist is able to express something that a lot of people may be able to feel, but the artist is able to express it in a way that people can kind of access their feelings and things. So it's like, even right now, I feel like there's artistic statements that are waiting to be made to help mm -hmm. say what people are trying to say. Because like right now, a lot of times, you know, you, you see a tipping point has been hit right now. And when you hit a tipping point, like, like, yeah, we don't really condone violence and stuff like that, but we don't condone people trying to incite violence by, you know, you know, right. putting bricks out and, 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 and throwing people at each other. But mm -hmm. the human species is, a, is an emotional, irrational species. And my brother Joseph has been good talking about that. He says, has I've there been, been anybody, those. has there been, anybody got so angry that they hit the wall? You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Rather mm -hmm. than hitting the person. Mm -hmm. Well, this mm -hmm. is like a big version of that, where people are just lashing out. It's not all the way rational. It's just right. a tipping point of mm -hmm. rage mm -hmm. has hit the wall and said, enough is enough. So mm -hmm. um, Sometimes people it, clap their hands when they're angry. Oh, I'm so mad at yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You or know? pound the desk or right. punch the wall. You know, it's right. irrational, right? Mm -hmm. But I think the arts has a, has a way of getting in there, maybe, and saying something where the politician maybe is not as skilled as an artist, see mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I sure artist do. artist understands something about orchestration, how to mm -hmm. speak to that instrument and mm -hmm. that instrument, mm -hmm. transpose for that instrument, mm -hmm. transpose for that instrument. It's a skill, it's art, it's, 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 it's uh, mastery, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And if, mm -hmm. this is, if we have to do all of this to transpose for the different instruments, you know, like if I try to just write a C, on the piano, and I write the C and give it to the French horn, it's, it's not going to play the C. Mm. I don't know the rules of transposition. I've got to give them a G. You know, I've got to mm -hmm. give them a different note. Mm -hmm. So if this is so for instruments, how much more so for people, man? Mm. You know what I mean? Sure. There's a lot of people out here trying to understand how this thing goes together. So I just think that there's a place for the arts to, to speak. You know, mm. not just the politicians, not just the... Uh, this, this anger that I think art has a place and you know when you see the great movements whether it's the civil rights movement this movement that move, movement music had a big part in it and I just think uh, you know it's a call for artists you know what I mean sure to help, you know say something yeah so so in 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 keeping with that right I think that's yeah. great I think that's beautiful I, I love the way you frame that um, mm -hmm. so so my question then is yeah. what is the role of the artist you know, what is the role of the artist in this? What, what, um, what expectations should we have of ourselves? Um, well, it, it's funny because expectations can ruin it. You know, it's kind of like... Uh, good point. Mm. See, expectations can ruin it. It's kind of like uh, art is beyond... It's kind of like even an athlete. You know what I mean? Like I was just talking about Billy Cobham and these great artists that are just playing music so far beyond what you would expect. You see mm. Giovanni Hildago, Billy Cobham on the drums. Or, mm. You know, the way Michael Jordan, these guys play basketball. That was beyond expectation. Sure. And so art has that ability to go beyond our expectations. So I'm waiting. You know what I mean? It's not so much mm. like I'm expecting 
something for I'm waiting to be surprised. Like you said, what is the meaning of improvisation? Improvisation mm -hmm. is like improvisio. You know, so somebody's going to come up with something that's beyond mm -hmm. a political statement. Mm -hmm. you know what I mean, it's kind of like that song, um, Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Let you know, it just, yeah. A song just touches, can touch a nerve mm -hmm. the same way this can touch a nerve. And it's an artist that can do that. Not because right. you're expected to do it, but just because the arts is its own power, you know. Uh, sure. Absolutely. And so, you know, that's kind of how I'm feeling about it. But but earlier you talked about uh, systemic racism. And um, for people who don't understand that, you know, a lot of people don't understand how something like this would just erupt. But, you know, this, 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 this kind of treatment by police, if you go back to Miles Davis standing outside of his gig, and the policeman just tells him, man, you got to you gotta move. You got to move. He says, mm -hmm. look, I'm playing here. There's my name right there. We don't care. Wow. Right. Cracked his head open. It's the same, it's the same story. Mm -hmm. the same story. 60 know? years, 70 years later. Yeah. Right. And so my thing is, again, when I say artists, right, I, I believe that to help people see it. Like, I've been doing it for myself, you know, because I've been inspired by um, – when they talk about like Phil Jackson, a lot of times when he was coaching Michael Jordan and Dennis Rodman, all these irrational players, to get them to see what he was talking about, he would create these films and just get them to watch these films. And so I've just been collecting these different film clips of just stuff that even shocks me. I just, I can't even keep up with all of the, like the, 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 the different incidents of 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 just this just brutality, man. It's just so out of control. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you just don't believe that people can come to that, you know. And uh, maybe sure. this tipping point will help to. I feel like now with the pandemic and everything that we're in somewhat of a reset. We're kind of in a reset. I've been calling the same thing. Getting broken up mm -hmm. and stuff like that. You know, you don't have to wait for NBC and all the networks because somebody's uploaded their video from their phone and showed you what happened and just cut right through sure and so it's a it's a different time right now mm -hmm. and uh it may be where the caterpillar is learning to be a butterfly it's learning to be something other than crawling around on the ground with your face on the ground you know what i mean like the caterpillar maybe is learning something different mm. if i'm using caterpillar as a metaphor for civilization crawling around you know going at each other you know sure um, Maybe civilization is meant to fly in some kind of way that we, we don't quite understand yet. You know? Yeah. So, um, you know, uh, again, I was just going to say uh, with the systemic racism, I saw, I heard something on NPR today, and they were talking about uh, uh, with black people, uh, when did you get the talk? Now, a lot of like white people probably mm. don't know what I'm talking about. When did you get the talk? Oh, did I lose you, Roy? Are we all frozen? Actually being so, in a life and death situation. Well, one second. I, yeah. I think you froze there for a second. You said, when did you get the talk? And let's start yeah, okay, there. Okay, so yeah. Yeah, so th the talk is when the parents have to talk to the kids about getting stopped by the police and how to respond. Do not reach in your pockets. Do not make any sudden moves because your life could be in danger. Hmm. And so for me and my brothers, the talk was we were kids. I think Vic maybe it was six, seven, eight, and we're coming back from a gig. And all of a sudden we see these red lights. We're pulling a trailer. There's five okay. kids sitting, my mom and my grandmother in the front seat. And these lights pull up. Woo! And man, this guy, he looked like Barney Fife, real skinny, and but he was shaking with his gun cocked mm. at my dad's head. I mean, it was just like any second, man. When I was like, we getting ready to see his head get blown off. And he's like shaking and saying, show me your license. <laughs> and my dad had his hands on the steering wheel, and he just pointed his head to t t show him where his license was. Uh -huh. Then slowly, finally, and this guy was shivering, right? Mm. But the gun was cocked, man. Hmm. And uh, another cop just easily, after about three minutes, four minutes, another cop just kind of walked behind him. 
and just slowly put his gun down, said, you know what I mean? Mm. Calm down. I mean, it's just kids, a grandmother and a mother. We're not who they're looking for. You know what I mean? Right, We're right, right, right. Trailer, you can open the trailer and see it's just a band full of equipment. You know what I mean? But just at that second, we could have seen his head blown off. See what I'm saying? And we and so, so, so you yeah. were what, 10 or 11, you said? Is that right? Uh, if Vic is uh, six or seven, I'm, uh, I think, six years older than Vic. So, okay. you know. Yeah, right. it's this kind of thing. Right, 12, but here's 13. the talk. The talk was, after it was over, our dad said, look, <laughs> he said, you have to understand that this society is afraid of, of you. You know what I mean? Mm. Especially black men, they're just, they're afraid of you. And a mm. lot of this, your, this society that you live in does not like you. They're against you, right? And he said that uh, the reason why he didn't, he kept his hands on the steering wheel because mm -hmm. if he would have reached for his license, that cop would have surely shot him. Mm. So he said, if a cop ever stops you and asks you for your wallet or something, do not reach in your pocket mm. because you will most likely get shot. So this is a form of the talk we're talking about. Mm -hmm. and a lot of black people, when you hear them talking about when did you get the talk, they're talking about their parents explaining to them how any stop is potential life and death. You know mm. what I mean? Sure. And so we had that talk, and we were just so glad he didn't get shot, you know? Yeah. Now, this is what my brother Joseph is talking about. You could probably talk to almost any black person. This, this is a Ken Burns documentary, right? Mm -hmm. You could probably talk to almost any black person. And if it's not them, it's somebody they know has an incident like this. Mm -hmm. So you have an iceberg. That's beyond statistics. These are statistics you have no idea about. But these people have so many personal statistics. And it's like something has just kind of reached a, a, a tipping point. Mm. It's just kind of reached a, a tipping point where enough people have said, that's just as enough as enough, man. You can't just mm. snuff a man's life out mm -hmm. over and over and over and over and over. Mm -hmm. You know, for me, it's just like, wow, man, it's painful yeah. to see it. It's painful. And say, if I speak... Well, like a, like a lot of black people, we're sitting here, right? And we see Eric Garner. Man, I didn't want to see Eric Garner get choked out on New York streets. Mm. You know, he just got choked out. That dude never got arrested or anything. Right. We know that, right? Mm -hmm. He just got away with that. He just choked the man out. And there's no justice. You know what I mean? And yeah. you just go, wow, who's next, right? No justice. Mm -hmm. No justice. Because it could be you. It could be anybody. Oh, man. You know? Mm -hmm. And what is it for? Uh, his was for some kind of cigarettes that were illegal or something like that. Mm -hmm. And this one was for a $20 bill that da, 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 da. Counterfeit, he made little, yeah. minor, little minor incidents, you know, and mm -hmm. stuff. And so this is what people are upset about, you know what I mean? Like where you just have like kind of a no recourse kind of situation. Now, for me, I think speaking from a future man standpoint, mm -hmm. as we look back on this time, and this era of this kind of brutality, it's easy for us to look at Germany and watch their crimes against humanity mm. and have no problem calling it crimes against humanity for what it is. But America is not calling it crimes against humanity, what it really is. See what I'm saying? They're calling mm -hmm. it civil rights abuse, mm -hmm. right? This is human rights abuse. And history will look back on it and show it for what it is. And one of these days, you're going to see one of these cases go before the world court and name it for what it is. See what I'm saying? Yep. We're not just talking about civil rights uh, uh, abuse. This is crimes against humanity is what's mm -hmm. going on on a regular basis. Yeah. See what I'm saying? Yep, sure now, I'm is. Speaking in, I'm speaking in future tense now, but when we call it for what it is, crimes against for humanity, there's no statute of limitations for that. Mm-hmm. Nor should there saying? be. Yep. Right. You remember the Nazis when they find them guys at 90 years old? Mm -hmm. they, they did crimes against humanity. They take them in. They, yes. Mm -hmm. Right. So I'm just saying this is this is future tense kind of stuff. When we look back on what is going on, mm -hmm. I think, you know, there'll be, there'll be some 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 resolutions that, wow, man, we really still had a lot to learn with all our modern technology, all our cell phones and all of this. We were still out of control as a species, man. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I believe this is why civilization is rising and falling. I believe this is why a civilization can be a great civilization. But guess what? All of great civilizations that came before us, they're not mm -hmm. here anymore. 
Right. Why are they not here anymore? Right. See, I believe mm-hmm. it's going to be it's a little uh, human flaws like this. Yeah. You know. You know. Yeah. So. Yeah. So you know, I, 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 you know, on my on my Facebook, I, uh, I just send little quotes out there, and uh, which I love, was, by uh, the way. Well, thank right. you, thank you. Yeah. But uh, uh, I think it was Hemingway said, you know, when you write, you just want to try to write your truest sentence. Hmm. So I can read something really quick because uh, my brother Joseph goes into it. I try to, I try to not go into it too much because hmm. people can get really emotional. But I'll, I'll, I'd like to read a little bit of what I wrote uh, to address sure. where, where I think we are. And, mm-hmm. and for me, this is my truest sentence. And I'm just going to go through it fast. It might not make sense, but you can go on my Facebook and see it. Oh, take, take I, your time, and I, man. And your, okay. Facebook is, your Facebook is what? So people can check Roy it out? Roy Wooten. Okay. Wooten. Yeah, yep. it's got a big or- orchestra group, you know, in, in, yep. on the picture. Mm-hmm. But I just wrote, this is a June 2nd, I, and I told my brother Joseph, I said, thank you uh, for sharing your truest thoughts, brother Joseph. I believe we have so much we can learn from this and that there is so much to grow from this. I'm so personally hurt and so very sorry to continue to witness the strange fruit picked from the popular trees of the black killing fields. It is so very hurtful and painful to continue seeing so many modern day murder rituals being captured on camera. So many killings in modern day uniforms, so many crimes against humanity not being brought to the world court for justice. So many modern day criminals going unpunished for human rights abuse. Like it's just business as usual. To get away with murdering people, if you're disguised in a uniform, I am hurt and very sorry. Yet hopeful and very thankful that justice where it is necessary, that justice where it is necessary, forgiveness where it is needed, and positive change with a vision for a sustainable future may all come to our rescue. I believe that we represent one of many civilizations that get a chance to flow through time. And if we look at all the great civilizations that have come and gone before us in our history books and ancient records, I think this one singular theme still holds true, that all people perish simply for lack of vision. So here's Hmm. my raised glass and toast to great vision, to great courage, to great discipline, and the hero's journey. Hmm. This is a toast to humanity. Let's do this. Let's make things right. This is my truest sentencing that I can write at this moment. Hmm. It's beautiful. Drop yeah. the mic. I'm out. Yeah. <laughs> it's, um, uh, it's, it's beautifully beautiful and unbearably sad at the same yeah. time and hopeful you know yeah it's yeah. it's so many different things and yeah um you know i i think that you know we were talking about the arts before and i think that that's kind of what exemplifies the arts is that they represent all those different things you know it's 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 the, all the different parts of humanity and yeah, because uh, go ahead mm-hmm. yeah. yeah because i was going to say see with the arts you can take the dagger of your pain and not just stab someone with mm, it, right? Mm. You could actually make the impact, you know? So, so, so here's an example of what I'm talking about. Um, the director, uh, who, uh, uh, the young kid that directed the Black Panther, billion dollar Marvel comic book movie. Mm-hmm. His first movie was uh, the Fruitvale Station, which was about a cop killing, right? Oakland or wherever it was at the Fruitvale Station. Mm. So he said, instead of writing and stuff, he's a filmmaker, right? He took it all and poured his feeling into this film. He said, I want people to know this guy was my age, right? I Mm. want you to feel him as a human being, right? He made this film and won a bunch of film festivals. Boom. Uh, His second film was Creed, right? He wrote Mm -hmm. the story about Rocky uh, mentoring a black kid who was Mm -hmm. Rocky's opponent. That was his second movie. His third movie was The Black Panther, almost $300 million, Mm. right? Right? And if the beginning of the Black Panther started off right next to the Fruitvale Station, that's where they're playing basketball. Wow. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So he's finding his voice. And a lot of times I think that it's through like this pain and divine destruction 
that some uh, another kind of power can come through it and people can find their voice too. Mm. But that's just an example where art was the weapon of choice or the vehicle of choice. Mm. You know what I mean? To lift all ships. You know what I mean? There's, there's a rising tide that can lift all the ships. Sure. And art is one of those kind sure. of things. You right. know, it's kind of like Coltrane's Love Supreme. When right. he wrote Love Supreme, everything was not lovely. You know? It's true, of course. Yeah, see what I'm saying. Yeah, right. But he took that. Yeah, he he, he, took, he, he took the higher road. He, he, yeah, he took that. He lifted he all poured, ships. Yeah, and poured something in there. Yeah. And right now, I feel like it's that kind of effort. Mm -hmm. And again, I don't want to make it like what's expected because something expected can can spoil it. Yeah, you no, that's I mean? that's a good point. You yeah. know what I mean? I don't expect Alex Arnold to want to climb a crazy mountain with his bare hands, man. Sure. You know what I mean? Sure. You know, it's unexpected what people are going to come up with. You know, right. I don't want to even limit what people might come up with. Yeah. I believe people are so resilient. Yeah. That 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 people, the goodwill of people, I think, are going to surprise us, and it's actually surprising to see. Mm -hmm. the courage of people, and hopefully, uh, they're able to keep a discipline and not get rabble roused into a yeah. violent spree, you know? Yeah. Well, I, I would, I, this bring, kind of brings me into, into another couple of questions here. Um, yeah. So I do find myself getting angry. I find myself getting angry um, um, at, at systemic racism. I find myself upset that, that friends and family like yourself have to deal with this on, on nearly a daily basis, if not a daily basis. <laughs> Oh man! I find my, even, I find... in, even in great elementary school, man. Mm. Elementary school, man. I asked yeah. my third grade teacher a question, and she answered me by saying, "Son, you don't have a history." That was her answer to me. Come on. You don't have a history. Your history is slavery. And I was like, "Man, where did that come from?" Wow. <laughs> See what I'm saying? Wow. So, so, and, so, do you get angry? Man, maybe it's a little different. It, it, it is, but it's like some of the stuff I've seen, it, in a way, it is, you know. It is angry, but it's something different, too. Um, can, can you explain what that is? Okay. So I just saw something the other day, and it was just so shocking. This is this is a friend of mine who was, uh, he played one of the characters uh, in my in the film that I'm working on, the Black Mozart, Shabari St. George. He was uh, one of the guy who played the Black Panther, Chadwick Boseman. He was one of his crew that he brought in on the set, played the drums and stuff. So I was looking on Jabari's site the other day, and, and, and I just saw this by accident. He said, now this is the sh that we're uh -huh. just getting tired of. And they just showed the cops just run up on this dude all these people throw him down on the ground and they sick the dog on that dog just grabbed the hold of his back leg ah it was just biting him and they were handcuffed him at the same time but the dog was just biting he's down on his face and he's up screaming and cops said get your head back down ah right the dog is just like ah and he says please don't bite my leg all ah the girlfriend is filming it and it's just like <sighs> so it's like more than anger is shock. I'm, you know what I mean? Like, I'm just shocked that that could exist. If I saw that in a movie, that would just be like, you know what I mean? And then when he said, get your face back down, he put his foot on the other foot down so the dog, so he couldn't move the foot and the dog just, ah, was just gnawing, like just going at this dude's leg. And it's like, what did that man do for them to just sick that dog on? It was, it was outrageous, right? Mm -hmm. So, I'm trying to answer your question. Was I angry? Yeah, it's in there, but it's something else. It's like shock beyond. <clears throat> it's like shock and sadness that that mm. that that it can come to this. It's mm. almost like if you're in a civilization, you just see people start eating each other. So like, does it really come to mm. this? Mm. You know, I mean, that was just shocking. And um, what I did is I just documented it. You know what I mean? I just captured that because I said, this is like an American, a Ken Burns American special mm. that would, would be hard to look at, but this is America too. Mm -hmm. And until we see it, you won't believe it. See what I'm saying?
Yeah. Until you see that, you won't believe it. Now, right. this well, is what we, my brother we, Joseph's saying. Mm -hmm. it, this is mm -hmm. not in your stats. This is not in your statistics, you know, because as my brother said, everybody wants to give him statistics. Oh, well, this this is how many brutalities happen to this race. And that race, he said, look, you know what I mean? We don't really want, right. you know, there, there's so many statistics that people have lived through. This is not like an analytical kind of thing. You know, it's just like, wow, man. So maybe it's kind of like, I know that anger is not the, there is anger, but it's something different. You know, like when I see mm -hmm. Miles Davis get hit over the head, you know, here we go again. I know this story. Mm -hmm. And it is anger, but it's something different too. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how to put my finger quite on it. You know what I mean? So is it, is, is, does it feel like a combination of these things that's kind of a unique feeling that's, that's just unnameable? Shock is one of the words I'm talking about. It's just like when somebody just like, it just does something outrageous. Like, mm. it's like you just shock, man. It's like mm. a disbelief. It's almost like, it's like, like if you're in a war, right? Somebody mm. just drops a bomb on you. It's almost like it's too, it's, it's, it's beyond anger. You mm. know what I mean? Mm. Like mm. somebody has done something so outrageous. You, you, you know, you had a cop in and somebody just exploded a bomb. You just have to like, whoa. Yeah. You know what I mean? It, it almost steps past anger to like, whoa, man, what are we dealing with here? That it can come to that point, man. Mm. Mm. Uh, so, so, uh, Roy, how, like, how do you, how have you found um, that that you deal with those things? Like, is has it been through art? Has it been through <clears throat> conversation? Has it been through meditation, prayer? Is it, what What are the methods that? It's a lot of all, yeah. It's a lot of all of them. See, because my 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 grandparents and them were very religious, mm. you know, and so from that side of things, mm. uh, from the prayer and the and the religious side, like my grandmother would always say, evil men are always plotting. They work harder than good men a lot of times. Mm. But it, she said, uh, what evil men mean for evil, God can turn around and mean it for good. You know mm. what I mean? Mm. It's like that. There, there, can you repeat there, that one more time? What evil men mean for evil, God can turn it around and make it for good. Mm. See what I'm saying? Just like mm -hmm. in the riots right now, there's a lot of people that want to see it break out into violence. You can see videos where people are planting bricks, yep. saying, sure we know you're going to be mad, so hey, there go some bricks. Throw some bricks. You yep. know what I mean? And they're trying to change the narrative and throw it into an anger fest. You know what I mean? To lose all fest. So, but look at what the people are actually doing. It's like, whoa, there's something else going on. There's a different narrative going on. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. what people might have meant for some kind of big race war kind of thing is turning into a different kind of festival. Mm. So that, that, that's from the religious side. They always talk like that, you know? And gotcha. those kind of things are also helpful. And um, my mom... One big thing, I think, when I was in school, because uh, me, Reggie, Rudy, more so than Joseph and Victor, things were changing by the time they were coming through school. But we just dealt with, like, racism straight on, you know. Mm. And, like, uh, like I told you what my third grade teacher told me. I'm just answering, asking a question about school. And she says, you don't have a history. Your history is slavery. Mm. <laughs> So I go home, I talk to my mom about it, right? And she, she explains it from a different way. Now, here's something that she told me when I was a kid that really helped my whole life. She said, when people hate you, you don't have to hate them back. Mm. That was huge. Mm. She said, you don't have to hate them back. And she, she said that the scriptures actually challenge you to love even your enemies. She said, I'm not saying that you know how to do it, right? Mm. But she said... The, the, the scriptures challenge you to love even your enemies. It's easy to love those that love you. Mm. But the scriptures say, I want you to well, think with an uncommon mind and love even your enemies. But mm. when she told me, she said, just because someone hates you, you don't have to match that hate for hate. So that took some of the venom out of the heart that could have mm. just been planted for a long time. Like you actually don't have to operate on the same level that someone's operating on you. And it seems like that gave like a little... It's like a, the force. Like I was, you're walking with the force now. Like you, just because someone calls you a nigga or calls you this and all that, you don't have to respond in the same way. 
Mm. And some kind of way, that was an axiom, man, that got me through. Because we got called a lot of names, man. Mm. You know? Sure. Okay. And, uh, well, I'm sorry. To me, that was an axiom. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry you had to deal with that. Yeah. But I'm you sorry know, again, you still have to deal with it, you know? Yeah. I, I think you just kind of get you, you just... <laughs> You just kind of get used to it. You adjust to it. And, mm. uh, you know, everything has its seasons. You know, everything has its yeah. seasons. But uh, I'm hoping that this tipping point will uh, will help to resolve a season, of, uh, 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 this, this seasonal brutality, man. That, that mm. just, that, it just, that, there's just no excuse for that, man. You know what I mean? I agree. And, uh, and so, again, I'm just saying, when we talk about this is not just civil crimes, man. These are human rights crimes, man. And so to yep. see a man, I did not want to see that man choked on the street when that guy put him in that, that mixed martial arts choke hole. I saw what was going to happen, but I didn't want to see it. I saw it and didn't want to see it. I knew about it, but I didn't want to see it. And I saw it. I was like, wow. But what's harder than that, Jeff, is that the man to this day got his pension and has served no time. Hmm. See, this is what black people are dealing with. They watching people walk off. No that accountability. Man has not, no accountability. Yeah. He choked that man straight out, and there's no accountability for it. And this is what's happening so many times. So, you know, so you're just seeing something kind of reach a tipping point where, you know, somebody's hitting the wall. That, you know, like anger is the, is the first recourse of action. Sure. And as an artist, you know, I just feel like th there is something that the artist is given to address the age. And when I say that, what I mean is like, I really feel like the arts, when you look back on all of it, archeology span is digging up, what did the artists have to say? What did they mm. paint on that pot, mm. right? What did Mozart write? All the mm. orchestras know what Mozart wrote. They're playing his music every day, every concert, somewhere in the world, right? But can anybody remember who was the president during Mozart's time? Who was the king during Mozart's time? You can yeah. barely remember, and if you remember, you can't remember what he wrote. Mm. What did they write that, yeah. that anybody's talking about today, playing all around the world today? Right. So I'm saying the scales of when we deal with something with art, you're actually speaking for the age, for the ages throughout time. Mm. So that's why as an artist, I'm saying, what are we looking at? Media calls it civil rights abuse. Dude, I'm telling you, it's human mm. rights abuse. And when you look in the law and see the difference between those two crimes, one is like at a hundred and the other one is kangaroo court. You know mm. what I mean? Sure. The other one's just the kangaroo court. You know, it's just the, yeah. the, the court of your, your, the day. These, these are serious abuses. And I think history will look back and say, wow, man, we, you were going through a serious season. Now, we're not even seeing them all. You know what I mean? Of we're course. We're catching right. some of them on, on iPhones, right? Yeah. But yep. the things that we're catching are just crazy, man. When we look back, on who we were as a civilization with all of our technology and all of our understanding, our 5G, 6G, all of this, our cell phones, our flat screens, all this great technology. But who are we as human beings? Mm. Right? Man, we getting ready to line up just like all them other civilizations that ain't here no more. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, there's something about we got to be right with each other. You know, and I just yeah. think that, uh, you know, there's a great opportunity for something to kind of to help write itself. And um, like my grandmother said, you know, what What made maybe evil men plot for bad, if God means it for good, it turns into something else. So maybe we see mm. a movement where, wow, people are coming together where they're supposed to be fighting each other. Mm. You know what I mean? And maybe, right. maybe the tipping point is here for resolution, you know? So well, let's that's so. my hope for it. And, 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 and yeah. as an artist, as an artist on a, on, a, on a construction level, I believe that the new normal, <laughs> the new normal, man, it might be surprising, man, because, mm -hmm. you know, the new normal for me is like, well, wow, when are, when are, when are, when are our dates going to come back? You know? Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, just the other day, we, we got some dates for the Flectones, and, but do I really know that that's going to happen, you know, when it's supposed to? Nobody knows I know yet. The promoter, I know the promoters are suffering, you mm -hmm. know, so they need those dates to happen, but Really, what is the new normal? I'm sitting mm. here, right? I'm watching the government print up all this money, mm -hmm. stimulus, and I'm going, whoa, man, what happens when you just print up that money like that? Is that going to drive up and play? You know what I mean? I'm just like, what is this new normal going? 
Right. When you just throw that much money into the system, you know what I mean? I hear in the history books, like during Hitler's time, when a loaf of bread cost that, then all of a sudden it cost that. Venezuela, it cost that, then it cost that. Now look Overnight. at all this money pour, and I'm looking at all this money pouring into the system. I'm going, what is this new normal we're heading to? Mm. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So for, for me, uh, just as an artist, I believe that artists like we're doing now are learning how to say what we have to say online. I believe that artists are going to be uh, uh, learning how to do online businesses comfortably. Yep. I believe that affiliate marketing is going to be a very strong uh, online business to look at mm. uh, as far as like plugging into someone's affiliate marketing business that's already experienced. Absolutely. So you can plug into it, learn the ropes, and then learn how to put your products out. Mm -hmm. That those are the kind of things that I'm looking at. Um, affiliate marketing and just home based businesses are mm -hmm. going to be a strong part, I think, of the new normal. I agree. And then, yeah. And then I'm looking at, uh, you know, just these different examples of these gifting economies rather than just the gig economies where you're doing your gig economy gig, doing this or that. Mm -hmm. You know, there's some different kind of gifting economy models that I've been yeah. looking at too. So, Beautiful. You know, just really looking at what is the new normal, because I really believe it's going to be different than what we think, you know. I think you so, know? too. I think so, yeah. too. It's, uh, it's going to be very yeah. um Well, hey, uh, we've just got a couple more minutes here. Uh, All right. Um, Sorry. Uh, I, I, I no, 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 no. This, this has been amazing. This has been amazing. I want to thank you for sharing all that with us. Thanks for uh, having me, man. You know, and uh, so, so uh, th this will kick us out at an hour, I think. So. You know, yeah. we had talked earlier about maybe going out with some music, and this is a tune that that you played on Rada Bodafacina, also on the harp. All right. Bill Fanning on trumpet, Alana Rockland on bass. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I played piano on it and saxophone. Uh, my wife Leoko Suzuki is doing the recitation. It's a thing called the Universal Prayer. I'm just going to let some yeah. stuff play out, and and we talked about um, you know blacking out our screens. Fade to and, black. Uh, um, um, you know, in, in respect to George Floyd and, and all the others. So I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to drape mine. And right. uh, um, thank you. Future. Thanks Dan everybody. Thank I love you, everybody. you, my brother. And yes. uh, everybody take care out there. And I hope you'll stay around and listen uh, as yeah. we go out with this music here. And uh, I'm yeah. going to plug in and uh, you'll be able to hear uh, good quality sound. So we thank you very much for tuning thank in. Thank you. Everybody. May the wicked become good. May the good obtain peace. May the peaceful be freed from bounds. May the freed set others free. Blessings on the subjects of those who are ruling. And may these great laws rule the earth in a just manner.